Thank you, Andrew. I was getting worried there for a minute. You're going to start preaching my message for me. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. <clears throat> We're going to be reading from chapter 10 of the Gospel of John this morning. If you want to turn your Bibles or follow on the screen, I got my little cheat sheet here. John chapter 10, starting at verse 22. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered and told them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Well, as Pastor Andrew mentioned, my wife and I were missionaries with the Christian and Missionary Alliance for near, nearly 30 years. And uh, <clears throat> after our first four years overseas, we came home in furlough. And as many women are apt to do, my wife decided to go get her hair done. And uh, when she returns from the hairdresser, she walks through the front door, and our son Daniel, then only six years old, looks and says, Mom? You know, he thought it was kind of looked like Mom, but she looks so different with a, her different hairstyle. He needed some reassurance that this really was his mom. So he speaks to her in Dauphine, the language that we learned in Africa. And he, she answered him in Dauphine. And he was reassured because when he heard her voice, he knew it was really his mom. Just as Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. Just as a child know his mother's voice, we should be able to discern the voice of the Lord speaking to us. What a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. But even more than a privilege, it is fundamental because if I can't hear him, how can I follow him? The words believe and life are found more frequently in the Gospel of John than any of the other Gospels. These are two of his favorite themes. And we see that here in this passage. This passage is sort of a, a gospel in the nutshell, typical of John. He says a lot about sheep, using the metaphor of a believer being a sheep. He says that only those who believe in him are of his sheep. Jesus also says that only his sheep have eternal life. And that eternal life provides some amazing things, things that people are looking for today. It provides identity. A sheep doesn't run around for 20 years trying to figure out who he is. He's a sheep. It also provides purpose. His identity and his purpose are found in the fact that he belongs to Jesus. He's one of his sheep. He also has nurture, physical his physical and spiritual needs are provided for. He has guidance. If you're a sheep, Jesus leads you through those difficult decisions and life challenges. And he has divine protection. Now and throughout all eternity, no one can take that life from you that the Lord has given you. And only his sheep can hear his voice. And that was kind of a quick... Reader's Digest condensed exposition of the passage because we don't have time. We could spend the whole day in, in, you know, 
here I'm thinking of French word, just going into the depths of that passage. But our focus this morning is on that unique ability, only his sheep can hear his voice. Because this is part and parcel of the eternal life he gives us. This is our focus this morning. Well, how does the Lord speak to us today? Can I really expect that Jesus will speak directly to me? When Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, was he talking literally, or was he speaking only figuratively? The author of Hebrews says that God, who at various times and in various ways in times past, spoke to us through the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus. Jesus has already spoken a lot to us. All that is recorded in God's word for us, it hasn't it been? It kind of works like that, right? God spoke to his son, Jesus. His son's words were recorded for us in this book, the written word of God, the Bible. And as we read the written word, we receive what it is God has spoken to us through his son. You know, one of the first times I heard the Lord speak to me, I was young, I was in my 20s, I was going home for the weekend from college. I come home to find my nine-year-old brother, Chris, not doing too well, laying in bed, pretty sick. He had symptoms, apparently concussion. I mean, earlier that day, another kid had pushed him down the stairs at school, and he's lying in bed. He, he has nausea, he has headache, confusion about what happened to him. You know, he's talking nonsense, saying something about falling off his motorcycle. Well, you know, a nine-year-old kid does not have a motorcycle. And it's a Friday night, nothing's open, no doctor's office opening. You know, we're all kind of pacing around, wringing our hands, what do we do? Should we take Chris to the emergency room? And all of a sudden, I get this strong impression that I'm supposed to pray for Chris, for him to be healed. I'm like, what? Where did that idea come from? Is this God speaking to me? Why should I think that I could do something like that? But I couldn't shake this impression in my heart. We were supposed to pray for Chris so he would be healed. I wasn't quite sure what to do because I was a little afraid to act in faith because what if that wasn't the Lord speaking? But then again, if it was the Lord speaking, I didn't want to be disobedient. I got an idea. I'll talk to my dad. Pass the buck, right? So I say to dad, dad, I think we need to pray for Chris. The Lord will heal him. And Dad says, well, your, your mother and I have been praying for him. I say, yeah, I know, I know, but I, I mean, I think what the Lord wants us to do is kneel by the bedside, lay our hands on him, and pray for healing. Well, Dad thinks for a moment. He says, well, uh, okay, but you do the praying. So much for passing the buck, right? So as a family, we all kneel by my brother's bedside. We pray, and for a moment or two, nothing happens. Already my faith is starting to wilt away from my heart. And all of a sudden, my brother opens his eyes, and he says, Mommy, you can take the washcloth off my head. It doesn't hurt anymore. He was healed. <laughs> Praise God. And to add to that amazement of healing, he prophesied. Nine-year-old kid. No, he did not speak in tongues. He didn't start talking, spouting off King James in some more lofty tones. But what he did do in his nine-year-old vocabulary, talk for what seemed like five or ten minutes. It was probably just a minute. Praising God, thanking him for the fact he loves people and saves people and heals people. It was amazing. Praise God. My sheep. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. You see, God speaks to our hearts. We have a spiritual organ that the Bible calls the heart. Now, we like the time this morning to really get into the Hebrew concept of heart and then relate that to the Greek notion of mind, soul, and spirit. So think of it this way. Jesus talked to us about spiritual faculties, eyes to see and ears to hear. So think of the heart as our spiritual receiver. This is how the Spirit of God talks to us. God speaks to our hearts. 
In fact, this is what makes it possible for God to speak to us through his word, the Bible. How does that work? Well, we know that ink and paper, this book, is not God. But the spirit that breathes through these words, he is God. And as we read this word, the spirit of God witnesses to our spirit that what we're reading is the truth. It is God's word. And as we read the written word, we encounter the living word, Jesus, speaking to our hearts. The more time we spend in his word, reading his word, meditating on his word, even memorizing his word, the more time we spend, we learn to discern the voice of the Lord, which is the living word resounding in our hearts. In fact, I find often that when the Lord speaks to me, he quotes scripture. As believers under the new covenant, you need to remember we are both people of the book people of the word of God, but we are also people of the spirit. Yes, this word, this written word is our standard. It is the standard by which we test the validity of any and all spiritual experience. And we also know that if the spirit of God speaks to me, if it is truly the spirit of the Lord, he will never contradict what he has already spoken as recorded for us in this word. But tell me something. Does that mean when we say that God speaks to us through his word, does that mean exclusively? Does that mean that this is the only way God can speak to us today? What about people who can't read? Do we honestly want to say that people who cannot read are going to be excluded from hearing God's voice simply because they can't read? And my wife and I spent nearly 30 years overseas. The literacy rate has increased throughout the world, but there's still a good dozen or so countries where less than 50% of the people can read. Millions of people in the world today cannot read. Well, you say what... what Maybe they can pray. Well, let's think about that for a moment. Think back to your Sunday school lessons or your discipleship class or wherever you were taught how to pray. We're taught that we don't have to, you know, pray a certain way, use any fancy language. We don't have to learn any formulas. Prayer is simply conversation with God, right? A dialogue with God. The thing is, a conversation requires at least two parties, communication, give and take. If I talk to God and he doesn't talk back, that's not a dialogue, that's a monologue, right? Another thing we're often taught about prayer is we shouldn't just talk at God and give him this long list of needs and requests, but we should also listen. So who in the world, or what in the world am I to listen for if God doesn't speak to us today? Our conception of prayer is practically meaningless. It's practically nonsense if at the same time, <clears throat> excuse me, if at the same time we say that God doesn't speak to us today. I suppose I could put all my requests before God, lay them out, and then open God's word and begin to read in the hopes that in the course of my reading, God will answer my prayer and answer my questions. Well, you know what? That can work. <clears throat> Some people do do that. Some people do hear from God in this way. But if I want a real conversation in real time, a live conversation, I should say, in real time, I can also learn to recognize the voice of the Lord speaking to me. In fact, this written word that we subscribe to gives us at least seven other ways that God speaks to us. Let's look at the list qui uh, quickly. We have some slides. There we go. The first one is through creation. You're familiar with Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech. And night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. That's one way God speaks to us. A second way we already know through his word. 
Another way, by the still, small voice, talk, Elijah talks about in 1 Kings 19. And the third way, by this, that was the third way. Number four, the counsel and advice of men and women. Godly men and women, the count. Counsel and advice they give. Number five, the audible voice of God. Yes, sometimes God does speak to people in an audible voice. By dreams and visions. Number six, number seven, through angels. Number eight, by the revelatory gifts of the Spirit. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. These are all ways God can speak to us according to the Word. In one sense, the voice, his voice is continually streaming everywhere so that everyone can hear in the manner of Psalm 19. But God also speaks directly to his children in individualized, personal ways. And I can learn to hear God's voice speaking to me. I think the reason some people get so bent out of shape if you talk about God speaking to us directly is they automatically presume you're talking about some weird, you know, some audible voice booming out of heaven, like, you know, when, when Jesus was baptized or something like that. As we've just seen from this list, that's not always necessarily the case. There's one more way that God speaks to us that we should add to this list. In fact, it's probably the most common way, the primary way God speaks to us other than speaking to us through this word. And that is through our own thoughts. I was a young assistant pastor working in a church just outside of Pittsburgh. Senior pastor says to us one day, let's go out in the, the neighborhood and just knock on some doors. We don't have to do any, you know, hard evangelism, try to, you know, event, give everybody the gospel. You know, we can if people show interest, but we're just going to knock on a few doors and let, us, let them know who we are and where the church is. Okay, let's... Let's do that. So we go knocking on some doors, and one of the houses was our neighbor lady, just a few houses down from our house. And she's very friendly, seeming very open. In fact, she was showing us a correspondence course she was doing, a Bible course. This was before the Internet. You know, you had to read this stuff and fill it out and send it in the mail and wait for your next lesson. And I was looking over this material, and... It was really nothing about salvation. It was all about, you know, history and geology and the, how the world was in the time of Jesus. And as I'm looking at this and the senior pastor's still talking to her, all of a sudden this kind of, I describe it as a knowing, wells up in me. Knowledge I didn't have before. And the thought came to my mind, this woman is ready to be saved. I'm like, What? Am I imagining things, or did I hear that? He comes back again. This woman is ready to be saved. Well, by this time, I'm pretty convinced this is the Lord talking to me. I figured this was like a, some kind of word of knowledge for this situation, but what, I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't do anything. The pastor was already saying our, our goodbyes. It would have been awkward to interject, intervene, so we just left. And as we're going out, I say to the pastor, you know, I think the Lord just told me this woman's ready to be saved. And I guess he didn't know what to think or what to say because he just kind of looked at me blankly and said nothing. A couple weeks later, I was working on some, a message. The pastor was going to be away. I was supposed to preach. And anyhow, I got to thinking about this woman my neighbor just a couple doors down. The Lord told me she's ready to be saved. So I thought, well, I'll go down and visit her. So I go down, knock on the door. She's very friendly, invites me in. We're talking for a while. I share some scriptures with her. This is a testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Do you have Son? Well, no, I don't think so. Do you have life? Well, I guess not. Would you like to receive him? Yeah, I would. Can I do that now just like that? I said, yes, you can. We pray together. She receives the Lord. She starts attending the new believers class the senior pastor has and faithfully attends the church till the Lord took her home.
when God spoke to me about my neighbor, I presume that was just like a, a special word of knowledge for that occasion. I did not realize that this is typical of how God speaks to us, and that could happen at any time. I could learn to hear his voice at any time. Because sometimes this kind of spontaneous knowledge or thought, this is the common way the Lord speaks to us. Now, I've given you some illustrations. Let me show you from God's word that this is how the Lord can speak to us today. Matthew chapter 16, we have it up in the slide. <clears throat> now, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says to them, Who do men say that I am? And some of the disciples start answering, Well, some people say John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But he says, But who do you, who do you say I am? So Peter answers and says, well, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered him and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the Father who is in heaven. So Peter has this thought, this is Christ, the son of man, the son of the living God. And Jesus reveals the source of that thought. He says it was the Father in heaven that gave that to him. It wasn't flesh and blood. It wasn't Peter's own thought. He might have mistaken it for his own thought, but Jesus revealed the source. No, that came from God. Jump down to verse 21, same chapter. Jesus starts explaining to the disciples about how he has to you know, die on the cross for our sins, and the third day he'll be raised up. Peter takes him aside and says, Oh, Lord, far be it from you. Let this shall not happen to you. Satan rebukes it, or the Lord Jesus rebukes him and says, Get behind me, Satan. Why did he say that? Because Jesus, again, reveals the source of Peter's thoughts. Satan put that thought in Jesus' mind. Sorry. Satan put that thought in Peter's mind. Satan could never put a thought in Jesus' mind. Amen. Again, Peter, did Peter know that that was from? No, he didn't know. He thought it was his own thought. But Jesus reveals the source of Peter's thoughts. It came from the enemy. And that teaches us a very important principle. It's essential to Christian living. We have to understand that every thought that crosses our mind is not our own. There are three possible sources to our thoughts. Our own thoughts, God th God's thoughts, and the enemy's. Satan's kingdom. I'm sure that most of you have had the experience of hearing God's voice in your mind with not even, even realizing it. How many times have you just been out maybe mowing the lawn or driving down the road or standing at the kitchen sink doing dishes and all of a sudden the thought comes to you, oh, I, I should pray for so-and-so or I need to go do such-and-such. Such. You might even thought, where did that thought come from? Just out of the blue. Why should I be thinking that? And sometime later you find out that what you were prompted to pray for or what you were prompted to do was exactly the thing what was needed, and you might have even said to yourself afterwards, wow, that must have been the Lord. Well, we're here this morning to tell you that, yes, that was the Lord. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Just before we moved down here in the summer of 2018, I was waiting for a final job interview. I had two already, but the big boss couldn't make the last one, so I had to have another. This was real important. I knew this would make or break whether or not I got the job. So I'm in this conference room, pacing back and forth, back and forth, not wanting to be anxious, wanting to exercise faith, just commit this to the Lord. Lord, I need this job. So I get out my phone, I look up the verse, Matthew 7, trying to encourage myself in the Lord. I'm reading, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. For everyone who seeks, ask, and he who seeks, finds. And all of a sudden, the Lord interrupts my reading. And he says, you didn't ask. 
don't know why I'm always surprised, but I say, what? <laughs> I think the Lord probably gets tired of hearing me say, what? Yes, that's me. It's the Lord. He says you didn't ask. Now, the Word says that the Lord knows what we have need of even before we ask, and sometimes He gives us those things, but sometimes we have to ask, and I didn't ask. So I asked, and no sooner I had finished that prayer, the video screen pops up. Long story short, the interview went well, and I got the job. Simply put, the Lord speaks to our hearts, and usually when the Lord Jesus wants to speak to his sheep, his thought comes as a spontaneous thought that lights upon the mind. His voice sometimes comes as spontaneous visions, feelings, or impressions. It can come when we're reading his word, when we're driving a car, when we're praying, when we're sitting seemingly doing nothing. We can hear God's voice. I think the biggest obstacle to hearing his voice today is simply we're often looking for the wrong thing, looking for something that just isn't there. We think that we have to hear some audible voice moving from the sky. Or we're trying too hard to hear that still, small voice inside as if it's some kind of audible voice that we should be hearing inside. The first key to hearing God's voice is simply to believe what his word says about it. Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice. Believe that he does, in fact, speak to his sheep today. Ardently believe that he wants to speak to you. The second key is to understand that the Lord's voice resounds in the heart, sometimes as feelings, sometimes as notions, sometimes impressions, sometimes as just a sense of peace. Through that, he leads us into doing his will. The third key is to understand that the Lord's voice often comes to us as a spontaneous thought. In other words, what he's speaking to us in our hearts, when that needs to be articulated in more intelligible detail, it forms as a thought in our minds. We just have to learn to distinguish God's thoughts from our own thoughts. How do we do that? Well, you know, if it's something contrary to God's Word, it's not from God. How do we distinguish His thoughts from our own? That takes time takes investment, just like learning to know another person. The only way to get to know the Lord's voice is put in the time, spend the time getting to know him through prayer and through reading the word and listening for his voice. A fourth key is journaling, keeping a journal. Some, this helps some people hear God's voice. When God speaks to you through his word or when he speaks to you in prayer, keep a notebook. Just start writing down. Don't analyze it. Just start writing down what you think you hear God speaking to you. And in that flow, you just might find a two-way conversation begin to take place. There are two action words in the verse we read. Our key verse this morning, 1027. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. There's two action words. Two things sheep do. Sheep hear his voice, and they follow him. It does a sheep absolutely no good to hear the shepherd's voice and then not follow him. That's why it's essential to learn to discern his voice so that we can follow him and do his will. When I heard Jesus tell me I should pray for my brother and I followed him, my brother got healed. When I heard the voice of the Lord telling me, this woman, my neighbor lady, is ready to be saved, and I followed him, that woman got saved. When the Lord, I heard the voice of the Lord tell me, you didn't ask, and I followed him, and I asked... I got the job. Do you see the pattern here? Actually, there's two patterns I wanted you to see. First of all, I purposely took illustrations, ones from 
my early college days was I was not officially in the ministry. One was from my early ministry, and one had to do with the secular job. It had nothing absolutely to do with ministry. Because I want you to understand that hearing his voice has absolutely nothing to do with being a pastor or a missionary, but it has everything to do with being a sheep. If you are a believer, if you are one of his sheep, he says you should be able to hear his voice. So the pattern here is hearing and the following is the path of blessing for yourself and for others. Hearing and following is how miracles take place. No amens? Hearing and following is how miracles take place. Hearing and following is how we step off the path of life being just same old, same old and onto that living path of living the abundant life that Jesus promised us. Hearing and following is how we bring glory to the Father, by bearing fruit and thus showing ourselves to be his disciples. Hearing and following is how we become the hands and feet, and yes, even the mouthpieces of the Lord Jesus, helping to bring the lost sheep of the world into the fold. This is your heritage. This is your birthright as a child of God. This is what he promises you. You can hear the voice of God. Are there any kids left here in the service? I don't know if I see any kids. I see a couple. Kids, this is for you. You don't have to wait till you're grown up to hear the Lord's voice. He speaks to his children. It doesn't matter how old you are. I like to put it this way. Eternal life lived in the here and now consists of hearing his voice and following him. Eternal life lived here in the present, in the here and now is lived out by hearing his voice and following him. The apostle Paul put it this way. As many are as led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. What is the Lord speaking to your heart this morning? Are you one of his sheep? Have you believed in him? Do you hear his voice? It's easy to become a sheep. Scripture says, but as many as received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And those children have eternal life and have the ability to to hear God's voice. What better way to do that this morning? Let's prepare our hearts to receive from the Lord this morning. Is the Lord speaking to your heart? I think the the Lord has a word for us this morning. In addition to what all I've been saying to you, I think the Lord gave me a word for all of us this morning, and that word is this. Today, if you will hear his voice... Do not harden your hearts as in the day of the rebellion. The Lord is speaking to you. David had a good response to the Lord for all the things that the Lord did for him. David said, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I thought we were going to have communion this this morning, and that that kind of changed, so we don't have any cups to raise. But we can do that symbolically. If you want to identify as a sheep that you have believed in him, and it is your desire to receive all of him, all that he died to purchase for you, this is the ultimate act of worship and thanksgiving. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And it gives glory to the Lord because it's an act of faith. And if the Lord has been speaking to you about a particular thing, I would like you to do something. I would like you to stand as a symbol since we don't have cups. You are raising your cup and saying, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. 
If you do not yet know the Lord, but you say, Lord, I believe, become my Lord. I want to become your sheep. You stand. If you simply want to receive this morning all that the Lord has for you, by this act of standing, we're symbolically taking the cup and calling upon the name of the Lord. I'd like to pray for you right now. People listening online, I'm praying for you too. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Afterwards, if there's something you'd like to nail down with the Lord, there'll be elders here to pray for you after the service. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we approach you this morning in the matchless name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that it pleased you to save men. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blood that redeems our life from destruction. Thank you for your broken body. It is by your stripes we are healed. And now, Lord, in recognition of that indescribable sacrifice, as a token of our gratitude, we worship you, and we now take the cup of salvation, and we call upon you, we call upon your name. Lord Jesus, open the eyes of our understanding to know the hope of our calling, to know the riches of our understanding. Lord Jesus, open our ears now that we might hear your voice. Open our hearts and our minds to receive your boundless love and follow you as you lead us. We thank you, Lord, that we are yours, your people and the sheep of your pasture. We receive now, Lord Jesus, all that you have for us. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.